is an unspoiled network podcast. This is Spoil Me, covering Veronica Mars season two, episode five Blast from the Past. In this episode, I have a lot of questions about the way things are going down with Sheriff Lamb. And also, uh, what's going on with Wallace is one of those things where I'm getting what I asked for, but I don't like it. Welcome to Spoil Me. Welcome to the show, everybody. I am Natasha, and this episode is brought to you by Renee. So many thanks to Renee for commissioning this episode. Um, I have watched this, I think, three times now. It might just have been two. Um, And this episode is chock full of little moments that I'm like, did I get that right? So I'm going to have questions for y'all. There are Rachel and Agnes, Agnes, in the chat right now. Hello to both of you. Um, so hopefully you guys can uh, help me out as I start to get into some things a little bit more. I just want to talk about Wallace r- like right at the top of the hour, though, because obviously the way the episode ends leaves you with some feelings. Um And I don't really know what those feelings are, if I'm being perfectly honest. It's not even when I said at the start, I'm getting what I asked for and I don't like it. One could take that to mean like, well, I just wanted there to be something more for Wallace to do. But what he's getting to do is a bummer and I'm sad about it. But that's not really what I mean. Um, What I mean is what's going on with Wallace feels out of character to me. Um, And the problem there is that what do we really know about Wallace? I don't know if this is out of character or not, because I know so little about who he is that I make, I made this like judgment call mentally and then sort of had to stop myself and ask what information I thought I had that pointed in any particular direction, re, how he'd handle this kind of news. He has not been given the opportunity to deal with anything of this magnitude personally. So, frankly, I don't have a leg to stand on when it comes to like judging how he would react, and the fact that anybody that you know personally might react to news of this magnitude in a way that's wholly unexpected, just really lends some, you know, it it makes me stop and think about, even if I did know his character, sometimes when something this enormous gets dropped into your lap, you act a little bit out of character simply because you don't know what to do. You have no idea how to really handle the information and process the information. And Wallace doesn't have like a support system of any kind, except for his mother, who is the one that he is angry at. And that's the worst part of this is like realizing how little he has gotten out of his relationship with Veronica. And I've been saying that, like I have admired the fact that he seems as loyal to her as he does simply because of that feeling like a personal trait of his. And that feels like a, you know, he's a bit of a Hufflepuff, I feel like, you know. Um, but at the same time, it, and, and what what's so painful as well, is that the person who keeps pointing out that he's being sort of walked on and taken advantage of is Jackie, who I believe is also walking on him and taking advantage of him. And she doesn't have, like, an altruistic reason for pointing this out to him. She's not interested in him being treated better. She's not worried about him in terms of, like, his well-being. She's worried about being ousted by another girl that he prefers. 
because Jackie's ego is enormous and anybody getting more attention than her when she's in a relationship with that person is simply out of the question. This is clearly a girl who has never had to deal with being second to any guy that she has been with. Like you can just read it all over her. And so that's part of what's so frustrating as well is that she is coming at this with correct assumptions. She is side-eyeing Veronica, the way that he drops everything and runs to help her, the way that he respects her opinion and and seems to like crave her approval. All of this is true. But the reason that she notices and cares is all about her. And so there's no real support system in that respect either. And Really, Wallace, like, running off with his dad, as much as I feel like, dude, really? He doesn't feel like he's got anybody on his side. And the thing is here, I have to keep in mind, too, that for all intents and purposes, he is going to handle a strange man coming into his life, telling him that he's his real father in a very different way than I feel like a girl would. I'm saying that because if uh, most of us who are raised as women and girls, we have been socialized a lot earlier in life to be aware of how dangerous men are. And we have been socialized to understand how vulnerable women are when they get in relationships with dangerous, abusive men. I feel if Wallace were female and he met a guy who claimed all of this stuff that didn't match up with what my mom said and my mother explained to me that he was a drug dealer, probably, um, definitely a drug user, that he was abusive, that I changed our name to get away from him. I feel like a girl would cotton on to what that all means better and more completely. But Wallace has not had to worry about that kind of thing in his life, so far as we know. So him not taking his mother's advice and her word for it also betrays a lack of trust in her that I feel really sad about because it's one thing to like find out that your mother lied about something like this. But once she explains what she was going through, she deserves a little bit of credit and a little bit of compassion there. And it's pretty clear that this dude can just walk up into his life, tell him, no, that's not how it happened. She's lying to you. And Wallace is just going to take him at his word because his mother lied about this huge thing the one time. And that has eroded everything for him. I do not feel if I had been in this position when I was in high school, I would have reacted the way that he is at all. I already by high school had a very good idea of what abuse is and looks like. And if my mother explained, I like, I was trying to keep you away from him. He's dangerous and he's going to lie to you. I would definitely believe that. So I'm giving a lot of the like benefit of the doubt to him in terms of his socialization being really different and also judging him a little bit for how little he trusts his mother's word on this. Like I said, I understand trust was broken when he found out that she had lied about this all to begin with. But dude, you really need to like give your mother some credit that she wouldn't lie about something like this for the sake of it just because she wanted to keep it from you because she didn't like the guy. It wouldn't be for some petty, silly reason. It would be because of everything that she said. And this dude showing up on your doorstep at this age, acting like he could never find you before this, it doesn't make any sense. And I'm really glad that Veronica points it out. And it bothers me a lot that he doesn't seem to, to hear 
what she's saying, the genuine logic behind it, because he's so upset by everything else that he's just willing to throw it out the window. So overall, I really feel for Wallace, but I'm super frustrated with him. And I'm bummed that the show is doing this, that this is what they're doing with him to give him something to do, because I wanted him to have more of his own issues to deal with. But it being something that feels really outside of the purview of the rest of the plots of the show, it doesn't feel organic and it's sort of forced. So we'll see what this turns into. But as of right now, I'm not too excited about this turn of events. Um, and I just wanted to get that out of the way right at the top of the episode, because that's so much of what this episode deals with is not only Wallace coping with this news, but also Jackie fucking with Veronica as a reaction to Wallace's caring about Veronica the way that he does. And it should be noted that he doesn't tell Jackie what's going on with him and his father. And this is another thing that I always find really interesting and I'm sure is true. But like personally, when I was in high school and I was dating, the person I was dating was almost always the first person that I would call and tell with any sort of news. So something like this happens and I am likely going to tell my boyfriend about it before anybody, probably before even like one of my best friends. And he doesn't tell Jackie at all, as far as we have seen. So that's, that's thing number one that I'm just kind of like, hmm, it feels like you don't trust Jackie either. And I think that you know that there's something going on with that. But Jackie also, when they announce that they're going to be taking names for voting on Homecoming King and Queen, Jackie is in a classroom separate from everybody else where somebody nominates Veronica Mars. Now, this is a really weird thing that I feel like two ways about. The, the school, like, it seems like most people in the classroom, other than Jackie and Logan, seem to understand. And, and there's one other girl. What's her face? I forget her. But she's like, you know, the uh, bitchy socialite one. People seem to have reevaluated how they feel about Veronica. You know, last season, she was persona non grata. Everybody at the school just sort of treated her like she had leprosy. And now dating Duncan again, who was nominated for Homecoming King, and she was not nominated for Homecoming Queen, which I find really interesting. Like in my school, you nominated couples. You didn't nominate individuals outside of the relationship that they were in. And for her not to be nominated, but he does get nominated, feels like a purposeful slap in the face. Um, but Jackie overhears people talking about her being like a badass, being hot. Um, and then the girl that Veronica helped find her dog, she is in this goofy girl. I love her. She is in this class, like talking about how kind Veronica was to her, even when there was really no good reason for her to like be nice, which is one of those sad moments where it's like people don't, people shouldn't need reasons to be nice. They should just do that as a default when they meet a person in case there's not, you know, just do that. Just be cool. Um, but yeah, she is obviously has a more positive reputation amongst the students than she did in the last season. And Jackie, who is clearly just sort of used to being the center of attention, is not dealing with this well. And Logan gets on her good side pretty much right away by mentioning the fact that she didn't get nominated for homecoming queen and that he thinks that's an oversight there is no quicker way in in what i from what i understand of jackie so far there is no quicker way to her heart than to insinuate that she deserves more attention than she's getting i think that's that's a magical in i'm about to take a sip of coffee here everybody forgive me tip from me to you starbucks paper cups do not hold up well in the microwave don't do that. I just did that. It was a terrible mistake. So this moment combined with later on, well, combined with the previous episode of her being on a date with, uh, with Wallace and, and him dropping everything to go and help Veronica that moment. And combined with later on her 
talking to him, him clearly not paying any attention and then getting up and going to talk to Veronica about what's going on with him. She really thinks, obviously, from the way that that goes down, it appears that she is under the impression that he was distracted and thinking about Veronica because he has such a crush on her and he runs off in order to see her and hang out with her. But she doesn't realize because he has not shared with her that he is distracted because of this really personal thing. And he is thinking about talking to Veronica probably because she is somebody with a background in investigation and could help him figure this out. I would like to register my disgust, I guess is the best word that even though he confronts Veronica about the fact later on that she did not offer him any shoulder to cry on, any sort of sympathy, that she still doesn't. That later on at the dance, when he sees her kind of getting into it with Jackie, first of all, he didn't see what led up to that, so he doesn't realize that Veronica is defending him in that moment. But also... When Veronica is about to run after him, Duncan grabs her by the shoulder and says he'll be fine. And I am unimpressed, Veronica, with the fact that you let Duncan talk you out of helping this kid so easily. Like, he just saw you do what... Basically, he thinks that you betrayed him. He ran off very upset, and you let him and did not do a thing to try and slow him down. And all it took was he'll be fine, which is really all it, it like, that's how you've approached everything this entire time is sort of like hand waved, whatever go is going on with Wallace and saying, Oh, he'll probably be fine. He's coming to you with information about a strange person that showed up out of nowhere, who claims to be his father, who claims that certain things went down very differently than Wallace's mother is saying. And you aren't even the slightest bit interested in checking into this person's background. Granted, we know that her father has already been looking into this because of everything that's been going on between him and Alicia. But you would think something this basic and this hugely important to a close friend of hers would be, it would be the least she could do. Really. That's, that's how I feel about it. It's just, honestly, th he's not asking that he didn't even ask, but it's not much of a stretch to think that you should maybe take that extra step and do a background check on this guy and find out where he's been living and what he's been doing for work. Find out maybe what Wallace's mother's maiden name was before. And if she did change it, how difficult would it be to track them down after a change like that? There is no effort made on her part to do any of the things that she would do if this were Duncan, for example. Um, and that I was really, really disappointed by. I just, I I can't help but feel like while Wallace is leaping to a lot of conclusions and while he's not trusting his mother, his feeling of betrayal in regards to Veronica is completely 100% justified. And there's really no excuse to be had. And she says something to him on the phone like, I messed up. First of all, I feel like she's saying I messed up because of her confrontation with Jackie, which that's a misunderstanding. That's not it, Veronica. That's really I feel like that's what she's saying. She might not be, but I feel like that's it. But secondly, after the I messed up, there's this pause. And then she says, but I can't lose another friend. Hi, it's it's really not about you. Can you not? make the fact that you don't want to lose a friend the center of your apology because he's going through some major shit and that's what this is about is him feeling like you have not been there for him 
So to frame that as, well, this will hurt me. Girl, shut up. What is wrong with you? She's just not like reading the room well at all. And I just feel so like, I just feel bummed out on Wallace's behalf at how lackluster this whole, her whole handling of this has been. So yeah, so that's, that's my feelings on what's going on with her. I just want, I want her to be better. I want him to believe that she cares about him beyond what he can do for her, which I don't really think he does believe right now, which I feel sad about. And I want him to have more than just Veronica and his mother to lean on. You know, I I feel like Wallace is actually kind of lonely and it makes sense that he would glom on to Jackie the way that he has, despite her apparently being kind of a shitty person because he's not exactly somebody with lots of options and she is it it would appear to somebody who maybe doesn't have the best judgment or it would appear to somebody who is a little bit desperate for affection or companionship it would appear that she is fighting for him Now, I think she is fighting for herself, but it feels pretty clear that he doesn't know her well enough to make that sort of judgment call about her. But yeah, I just, I want him to find a new friend, not to replace her, but to have someone that isn't just asking for things all the time. Um... So what Jackie does, and this is a really weird slow burn thing, because we see her going to that psychic and getting a reading um, that is supposed to be like her grandmother contacting her. Now, she talks later about how she, this is like her secret shame to Veronica. And it's kind of funny because she's not lying when she says that. Like, I, she actually is doing this. And it is sort of like a a weird moment where she has figured out just how to be how how to be just genuine enough to fool somebody, but lying enough to also, like, sort of, what's the word I want? To, to give what she says this air that I find to be really off-putting. Because Jackie, mostly, and, and Tessa Thompson, I have often had a hard time deciding if this is her or not, but she has a vibe to her of being really fake, which does well when, when she's a character like Jackie, because Jackie is fake. But in this scene, I'm like, does she, is she trying to act like she's being sincere? I guess she's acting as somebody who is not sincere, pretending to be sincere, which is a whole other thing. Um, anyway, So what she does is basically like pretend to try and be friendly with Veronica to fool Veronica into telling her something that's pretty embarrassing. And that way she can use it against Veronica later on, on the weirdly popular local access TV show. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. None of this rang true for me at all. Like this weird psychic show being on local access in the first place her saying something like everybody at neptune high watches it no they don't they definitely would not the whole the whole thing feels so like retcon being like everybody at neptune high watches it when she just like showed up at the school a few weeks ago and veronica's been there forever and doesn't know about it and also the fact that like when veronica sees the charge on the card for it she doesn't know what it is it's it's a weird setup that the show has decided to make it like jackie knows something very popular that veronica doesn't there's no reason veronica wouldn't know this but regardless the first thing that jackie does she goes to this this psychic she finds out that her card has been declined and she sort of um seems to get like a germ of an idea in that moment. 
So she pretends to need Veronica's help and goes to her telling her that her card was stolen and maxed out and that she thinks her friend did it. Her friend being this girl that was talking to her about, I saw this dress that would be perfect for you for homecoming. It's a real like, it's the kind of thing that if Veronica wasn't good enough at her job and she just took Jackie sort of at face value and said that, yeah, it probably was your friend that stole this girl could be in so much trouble and what a shitty thing for Jackie to do. I'm just, I, I don't know how much Jackie was simply willing to, willing to risk that this girl might get in trouble and how much Jackie was assuming Veronica would realize that this girl wasn't the one who did it. We'll leave that up for interpretation. We might find out more about that later. But as of right now, she just seems to be wanting to get Veronica like involved in this whole thing in order to, To get her to the point where Veronica is going after this psychic. And this is the part in the episode that I don't really understand. Why didn't she just get Veronica... Like, it feels like she set up this whole thing with, I think my friend stole my credit card. To what? Get Veronica to falsely accuse the girl and then embarrass her by proving it wasn't her? maybe and that just didn't work out or the end game was the psychic thing the whole time in which case just start with that like find a way to work that into conversation and mention that she you saw a girl supposedly contacting a victim of the bus crash and that was being exploited like just figure out the the way that you have her like chasing around after your friend all the time is just strange Especially, Veronica has by this point figured out that the goods that Jackie claims were stolen, like by using her card, are in Jackie's room. So she's watching this psychic with Jackie, having just discovered the $500 in vanilla scented candles in Jackie's room. Why... Is she going after this psychic now when it so clearly feels like oh, like this girl has an ulterior motive and has been lying to you? And why tell her about your, quote, secret shame when it's so obvious that she's not on the up and up? I did not understand this. If you guys have any insight for that, please help me. Because it just felt like she found indisputable proof that Jackie's lying about something pretty major, accusing a friend of stealing from her. That's a big deal, especially in the like, this isn't somebody who I think took 20 bucks out of my dresser. This is somebody who spent thousands and thousands of dollars on my credit card. And Veronica just found out two seconds earlier that she's full of shit and sent her on a wild goose chase for no apparent reason. But then feels free to tell her a weird secret that she tells Wallace later Literally nobody else alive knows this. I don't get that at all. That feels wildly out of character and incautious on her part. Unless it was supposed to be that Veronica was in turn setting up Jackie. But I don't think so. Based on the way Veronica reacted with total shock on camera and based on the way that she like yelled about it to Wallace later and told him that she couldn't let it go. I don't think that she was, like, in on it. I don't think she understood, you know. So, I don't know. Anya is saying, um, oh, no, Rachel says, yeah, it doesn't make much sense. And Anya says, the case of the week didn't make sense for me either. Yeah, same. So, okay. I feel a little bit better knowing that that just doesn't make sense. Like, it's disappointing in in terms of writing. But um, there are times where I feel like, am I missing something really obvious? Because that happens. I'll be talking about something and just be like what in the and then somebody in chat will be like well remember this and i'm like fuck oh i totally forgot about that that makes sense but yeah so i feel a little bit better that i didn't just miss something really obvious but all all it is 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 basically veronica walking straight into a really stupid petty trap that jackie laid just to like humiliate veronica and it's so stupid and so, like, the, the the way Veronica reacts to try and, like, get back at Jackie, 
I don't know what it was that Jackie was planning or that Veronica was planning on playing as the uh, request at prom, but I'm very curious about that. I don't know if we're supposed to know what that was that she was going to play or not. Um, Maybe she was going to play the uh, information that was her father, like talking to lamb, but that's so incredibly out of line that I can't, like if she was going to do that, Veronica had truly lost it. Um, oh yeah. Anya says when, when lamb says Jackie's dad lost a game or bet money. So it was that. Wow. Veronica, the fact that you even considered doing some blowing something like that up in that manner in response to something this childish way out of line, not okay. Like I'm really curious because I had thought like that the bug that her dad picked up from lamb's office was going to be the thing. I'm wondering if he isn't going to listen to the CD by accident or what, but Jesus Christ, like Veronica needs to see, she has to see how small Jackie really is. And she should not be fucking, she's got a lot on her plate. Just leave Jackie. Don't engage, you know, just girl. And she doesn't, but then Jackie starts to like, kind of go after Logan and Veronica reacts feeling like, I can't believe that you're about to try basically and make Wallace jealous at this dance because he didn't come with you. Jackie's not used to getting dumped. So Wallace calling her and being like, oh, I'm going to go to the dance, but I'm not going with you. I mean, clearly the fact that he is dumping her over this, it's a com it's a one, two punch to her ego. I don't get the impression that she's somebody who gets dumped. And I don't get the impression that the fact that she's like, thinks that she's being dumped because like, because he's more loyal to Veronica I mean, I'm sure that another girl being involved and being cooler and better than her has not happened to her a lot. So when Veronica gets angry at her on Wallace's behalf, thinking that like you're trying to upset him on purpose because you feel slighted and that's not going to, well, I'm not going to let that happen to my friend. Her reaction is, you need to choose because not every guy can want only you. Now, listen, this is another instance of me being like low key. Jackie's right. Like, I don't think that this is genuinely Veronica's hang up like consciously. I don't think that. I don't think Veronica's ego is tied up in this as much as Jackie thinks it is because Jackie clearly, clearly is projecting her own approach to life and her own priorities onto Veronica and thinks that Veronica's are in the same place when they are not. They have experienced very different lives and what Veronica values is going to be way different than what Jackie values. But Veronica trying to like kind of keep one toe in Logan's life a little bit um, and having Wallace like dancing on the hook whenever she needs him and being with Duncan, it does feel a little bit like she enjoys having some control over these guys. I wouldn't say it's like a, but you know what I mean? And as somebody who in the past has been guilty of this sort of thing, I get it. It's an ugly thing to realize in yourself and there's something about the way Veronica reacts when Jackie sort of throws this in her face that makes me think maybe Veronica got hit a little bit with that. Like, I, I'm pretty sure she would have argued immediately if she really didn't think that was in like anything to do with how things are going down. But because of how like she stopped short and sort of like looked at Jackie I think she's maybe realizing that Jackie's sort of like cut to the chase with her in, in a way that Jackie maybe didn't even intend. And I don't know, you know, I'm curious about that because 
having control over people is a really useful tool in terms of Veronica's like line of work. So there's also that not wanting to lose allies that you can potentially make use of at some point. Um, and that also like brings me back to the case of the week because I'm forgetting the name of the girl that Jackie is accusing of stealing from her. But Veronica like runs into her very literally in the hallway. And this girl is like, Oh my God, you know who I am? Yada, yada, yada. And all I could think was everybody has to know by now, Cora. Thank you, Rachel. Everybody has to know by now what Veronica gets up to. And so you would think that everybody would suspect some ulterior motive when she like runs into them this way in the hallway. I feel like that's just like her reputation has to be that people get she's like a busybody who never does anything for no reason. Right. But apparently not because Cora like Veronica really awkwardly just invites herself on Cora's homecoming dress shopping trip. And Cora's just a little bit weirded out, but really not bad. She's just kind of like, well, okay, yeah, you can come if you want. And I couldn't help but just be like, Cora, girl, you know who this is. Come on. But she doesn't, she doesn't seem to suspect anything, even when Veronica is blatantly ignoring her request to not paw through her stuff. And she finds that, like, I don't forget the name of the place, like the Pollo Chicken Shack or something. Um, she finds that costume because this girl works there part time. And that's how she earns the money to buy the stuff that she does. So, yeah, Cora, I feel like if Jackie really wants to do anything, go tell Cora that, like, you sent Veronica to spy on her. And that would get some people to turn against her to realize that, like, Veronica is shady in that regard. Um, but, yeah, so Veronica's, like, investigation on that doesn't really go anywhere, doesn't turn up anything. And it's just sort of a weird dead end that I don't really understand. But Cora, and I might be wrong here, I haven't looked it up, I think is played by the same woman who plays um, Abby, I think is her name, in Justified. And I loved her character in Justified a whole lot. And I really have, like, in my mind, those of you who read Dresden Files, have kind of cast her as Murphy in my head. Um, you know, Murphy is supposed to be this blonde haired, blue eyed woman, but this uh, very tiny black woman is super tough in Justified. And I really like kept picturing her as Murphy. Um, but anyway, that's off topic. I just wanted to mention that. So I'm going to go back and talk a little bit about um, what goes on with Veronica's dad, because the first thing he says about his campaign is I am your father's campaign is riding on a gravy train with biscuit wheels. I can I just tell you the look that Veronica gets on her face when he says this killed me. It killed me. I loved it so much. She just gets this expression like, OK, whatever that means, you fucking weirdo. Like it's re it's beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. It's 100 percent the reaction that a daughter would have to her father being like annoying. If you guys haven't watched us yet, the Jordan Peele horror movie that came out recently, there is a moment in that movie where shit is like really getting real. And the father says like, makes some joke or says something. And the daughter rolls her eyes, even in this like high tension, urgent moment. And it's so perfect to just have that still, that teenage frustration with your parent, even in the midst of like carnage. Um, but anyway, the expression that she gets on her face, um, he is completely sure that he is going to sail right past Lamb. And it turns out that Lamb has some information. Now, I say information in quotes because. I don't know if this really happened or not. And I can't tell from the way that her father reacted. He says something like, I'm not familiar. And let me back up to what it is that he's being accused of. They're in the middle of their 
stump speeches, basically, at some fundraiser. And Lamb says something about how if the uh, if he had there, there's a, a record of him pulling over the driver and finding out that he was drunk and rather than following protocol and writing him up or, or arresting him for driving under the influence, he followed him home. But if he had had a DUI on his record, we would not have hired him to drive a school bus. So basically what he's saying is this guy probably went off the road because he was drunk and probably you are responsible for keeping him on the road and getting this job. He says this and Lamb finishes this up when, uh, his, when Keith says, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with it. He says, it's okay. I have a copy of your patrol log if you need to jog your memory. And Keith sort of blinks. So my vibe is this did not happen. And Lamb is fabricating all of it. Because as we see later, Lamb is not above doing anything shady. Lamb is a piece of shit. So I think what he's saying is basically, oh, I know you have no memory of it, but trust me, I have a record. So try and deny that. And that is low. It is really low. And the fact that Keith tries to like work with Lamb later is just so infuriating to me. It causes his Keith's numbers to drop. He had, you know, up to now been enjoying a steady lead that he ha did not have to worry about at all. And all of a sudden they are like neck and neck with each other. Um <sighs> All right. Let's the, the the thing with the with the bribing. Um it's so weird. The whole thing is weird. So we have um Veronica delivering this bug to his office. It literally is a bug and it says, uh dear exterminator, knock him dead on election day. So he thinks that this is a, like a gesture of support. Um from Jake Kane, he thinks um, he later is talking to Jackie's father and tells him, like, I was hoping that you would buy a couple of tickets to this fundraiser. He says he'll buy two. They're 10 bucks each. And Lamb pushes him and says, I was hoping you would buy more like a thousand. And he, that he says, it's $10,000 if my math's correct, but hey, it's not three million. And he says three million very specifically because that number obviously is going to mean something to this guy and says, now that is real money. I mean, that's the kind of money that certain people take very, very seriously. Gambling debt like that. And they might send some guys down to your nice new cliffside house to pay to remind you payments due. Her dad says, I never bet on baseball. And he says, I got a guy in a holding cell back there. Says you did favors for gentlemen who bet extensively on baseball. Okay, guys. I am confused here. One... He's saying you owe money on bets and that if somebody finds out where you are while you owe, they will come for you. But this is a famous man. One would think they already know who, where he is. It's not hard to find him, right? So then who says you did favors for men who bet on baseball? What is that? Is this sexual? And, and ha like, I'm, I'm not even understanding what he's accusing him of. Like, they would bet on baseball. Oh, Rachel says, no, I think it's like he threw games. Okay. It would be cool if he would say that and not say who did favors for men. Because, good Lord, that was a very provocative way of phrasing it. Maybe on purpose, you know, like, 
But I really took that the wrong fucking way. Oh, I'm seeing that you guys were um saying earlier, I don't remember specifically. My inclination is that Keith did do that, but so long ago that he forgot. And Anya says, yeah, for once Lamb did his homework and has evidence. Okay. See, I thought that he was fabricating this and I was just like, well, you know what? He's over here like blackmailing and bribing people. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if he just fucking made something up. Um, but okay. So he threw games in order to, uh, get some people bets and what is like, he could, he has a witness that can say that this dude did this, but as far as like people that you owe $3 million, I guess he's saying that those are people who lost their money in bets that were fixed. So they would come at you for losing their money on them. Gotcha. Okay. I feel caught up now. Thank you guys. This is why I like having the chat. It's very helpful. Um, okay. So, oof, Jackie's dad. That sucks, man. Poor, poor Veronica finding this information out. What is it that she says? She's just like, say it ain't so. <coughs> and Lamb's smug ass face. I hate him so much. This actor is just gross we both have something in common we both we both like to see you in the hall of fame and yeah say it ain't so terrence is what she says because he's like her favorite and she shook his hand and said that she would never wash it um yeah that's some shit man i wonder what like she has to give this to her dad come on come on she can't not, like, turn this over. Turn this over, Veronica. Christ. <sighs> Speaking of why the fuck would you not turn this over, can we talk about this girl that has the phone call from her friend from the crash? Because what the fuck, guys? This bitch is sitting on a recording. The last known words of a victim of this crash that right there is a pretty big deal. That right there is something that I feel like maybe tell her parents, maybe let them hear it because this is their child and they would care just right there. Uh, and then, you know, there's also the media aspect of it. I understand not wanting to be ghoulish. You could make money off of it for sure. If you were a different kind of person, clearly that does not matter to this girl, but like, there's something real selfish about not telling anybody. And then there's the sound in it. Let's, if we put everything aside and the sound wasn't even part of it, handing it over would have been the kind thing to do in her memory. But when you add that there is very clearly some kind of shot or explosion or something that happens right before the crash, what kind of fucking moron does not turn that shit in immediately? This girl needs a slap upside the fucking head. I'm sorry, but this is inexcusable. And the fact that Veronica has to like sneak it into her own phone and then have her dad play it. And he has to like hand the recording over to Sheriff Lamb of all fucking people. It just, it made me crazy. This bitch, what is wrong with you? This is evidence. You can't have listened to that and not realize the significance of that sound. What did you think that was? Hello? Was it was it a tire exploding? You know, like, maybe. I don't know. But it clearly was something that's not the sound of somebody just like, you know, getting into a crash. I have no patience for this kind of thing. And... Her being to Veronica, like, please don't tell anybody I have this. I really wish Veronica had not pretended to humor her on that and instead been like, why should I not tell anybody? This is incredibly important. This is pointing to all kinds of things. There is a family being vilified because their father is supposedly killed these kids on purpose. There are people out there who would like to hear the words of their daughter, who, the last thing she ever said. There's evidence that this was like a sabotage job. There's all kinds of factors here. Plus my father being on the line, last on the list in terms of like, if you want to talk about this with credibility, but nevertheless a factor. And she doesn't say anything like that to this girl. And instead like, 
sneakily takes it and gives it to her dad, who hands it to Lamb, who eventually it's going to come out that this recording, like whether Lamb lets it out or not, it's going to come out that this recording exists. And this girl's going to find out that Veronica stole it anyway and get very angry, which just tell her that she's an idiot and that you are absolutely taking this recording and going to do what she should have done with it from fucking months ago. Oh, I got so mad, guys. I couldn't believe it when I like finally heard the damn thing. I was just like, you know, this isn't this isn't some subtle thing that nobody would realize the significance except Veronica because of her experience in, in you know, investigating. No, this is very fucking obvious. This is incredibly loud. What is wrong with you? Oh, I got so angry. So, yeah, this points to something else obviously having been a factor which like of course as viewers of the show we all assume that there's a, a huge other factor that we haven't seen yet because that's the the show there's no point in having this enormous tragedy in the very first episode if it's not going to be that somebody in the show was responsible for it right um it's not going to be the fault of a driver who we never met or saw it's going to be somebody that we like have gotten to know maybe a little bit or maybe not that much. I don't know. Um, but regardless, I can't like Veronica's theory on the whole thing with Aaron Eccles and the long haul being like the factor. I don't buy it. I don't really think that's actually like Aaron Eccles coming after her from prison at this point doesn't ring true for me it could be and in some ways i kind of like the idea of bringing an old adversary back into the mix somebody with the kind of money that he has would undoubtedly be able to pull strings from prison you know i get that but i just can't i i don't know i want it to be I want it to be something a little bit smaller. Like I'm wondering, and by smaller, I mean like th this is some grand revenge that he has. Um, and I guess I'm, I'm misspeaking. I want it to be bigger than just Veronica and her friends, but I don't want it to be like this vast conspiracy. I'm, I was kind of wondering if it had anything to do with, um, Kristen Ritter's character because we haven't seen her since that episode and I'm not really sure what significance she has in the overall story but we keep seeing when we start the episodes the flashback of like previously on and it's always her it could just be they're using her because she's the one who says it just went over the cliff and they're all dead that's a very nice summary of what just happened but it's weird that they would introduce somebody like her as purposefully as they did and make no use of her. And I'm wondering, was somebody trying to hurt her in order to hurt her father, who, you know, is the, uh, what the governor I'm forgetting his name or his position, but, um, yeah, I don't, uh, and I keep thinking about fucking, um, Logan as well, you know, and, and feeling like something's fishy there. I don't know what it is though. So, yeah, I think that's about it, guys. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I forgot to mention. If you all think of something, um, please say in the comments here. Oh, oh, you know what I did forget to mention is that Duncan is trying to mend fences with Logan. And I really, really liked this. I was really happy to see Duncan kind of getting his nerve up to talk to Logan and that Logan was receptive to him and seemed even a little bit touched that Duncan finally did this. And I liked to see the two of them like hanging out in the capacity of friends and addressing it even like Duncan says something like, well, despite the fact that this get together is all about mending fences, I'm about to kick your ass in this game. And I'm not really sure that that's going to help with that. And I liked it that he just like, you know, mentioned straight up, like, we've been having some problems and we're trying to get past this. And I really, really appreciate that they're trying to move forward with their friendship. I'm still concerned that Logan might have had something to do with the crash. And that's going to be such a betrayal that I don't know what will happen then. But maybe he has nothing to do with it. I don't know. I'm just highly suspicious of the way he was behaving right before they got on that bus. 
Rachel says he owns the local baseball team and he's running for a mayor type position. Okay. That's what I thought. Mayor type. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was really, that was a sweet moment. Actually. It is super weird though, that Duncan lives in this hotel still. Like I, I appreciate Veronica bringing that up again. I guess his home is, is evidence or maybe it's just like, not having good enough security. I'm not really sure actually, now that I think about it, why he's decided to uh, take up residence permanently in this hotel. But yeah, there it is. Um, so the last thing that we see is, uh, Wallace riding away with his father. And I don't know what he's thinking. I really don't. Um, <laughs> just dude, I guess just trying to get away. But like, and what's his dad thinking? What are you going to do with this kid? You don't know him. Do you have a space prepared for him? Is he registered at the high school in your town? Like at the, nobody is actually thinking anything through. That's what it is. Ugh, guys, I get so irritated. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, thank you very much to Rachel and Agnes for being here today. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'm just, this show, there's so much going on, guys. There's one more season. How many seasons are there? Three seasons, I think. Um, uh, yeah, three. Anya says, thank you. No, thank you. Um, three seasons and a mo there's a movie? What? How did I not know that? What? I had no idea there was a movie. Oh, that'll be interesting. And there's a fourth season coming out on Hulu. I did see that. I wonder when that's supposed to come out. I don't even think they've started filming it yet, have they? They just announced they're going to film it. Um, And two or three novels. Oh, good Lord. There's a lot. I think they are filming now. Okay. Um, wow, I had no idea there was a movie. I don't even like... Yeah, that's ringing no bells for me. That, that's surprising. Um, all right, guys. Well, cool. Um, thank you guys again. And thank you again to Renee for commissioning this. Super, super duper thank you. Really appreciate it. And uh, I will see you all again soon with a new episode. Toodaloo, motherfuckers. <laughs>